Thousands of injuries occur every season, no matter what sport at any given time. From minor injuries such as a sprain to more serious, including torn muscles and broken bones, nothing has drawn more attention the past few years than concussions. And there are many among us that have suffered. Um, I've had two serious ones that like were actually, um, like they were concussions. Two diagnosed. I had probably six or seven concussions through my high school year. I think I've had been diagnosed with two. I think the only concussion I may have ever had while I was in college, my freshman year. I've had three. One that I just really remember. I probably had more. I'd say around eight, roughly. Uh, it happened when I was 18 years old, playing junior hockey. I'm gonna say I had, uh, say roughly two. I have personally been struck in the head with a hockey puck. Uh, I'm sure that I had a concussion. I'd say about probably, probably about 10 of them. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Centers, a concussion is a traumatic brain injury caused by a bump, blow, or jolt to the head. What makes concussions the worst injury? The first concussion I got was my freshman year, and I never even knew I had one until I was riding home on a bus coming down Canfield Road, and I remember to this day, and I looked at the Dairy Queen, and I mean, it was just all blurry. I remember when I had a lot of my concussions, I would sit in my room, and I felt like I had an out you know, out of body experience, I would lay there and I felt like I was looking at myself. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a scary thing. And I actually won the fight, but I didn't remember. Like when the fight was over, I didn't remember, I probably didn't remember what happened to me for like the past six months. So like I was just asking questions. Like I ain't know anything at all. Lost a friend of mine, Andre Waters, uh, you know, probably from uh, multiple concussions. Uh, when he played professional football for the Philadelphia Eagles, so. Um, I don't remember anything from that night at all. I don't remember going to the hospital. I don't remember anything until I woke up in my bed the next morning. So that one was like really intense. I was out for probably like three months from that one. You know, it, it harmed your body more than just your brain because you lose your motor functions and you know, you, you lose your memory. All things, all types of things happen from it. Uh, when I really knew it was a problem was after the game and after I showered, um, felt like I was, felt ill, felt um, you know, like I was going to vomit, um, felt sick to my stomach. Um, and that was when I knew there was really an issue and, and decided to go to the, to the hospital. I was a great speller and now I can't spell that well. I recognize it, but I don't, when I'm typing a paper, I'll be like, oh, that's not spelled right, go back and change it. But I was never that way. I do remember um, the night that it happened when I got home, my roommates had to stay up and like watch me and like wake up every once in a while to make sure that like I was okay. Cause I'm not sure if like you, if you fall asleep, I guess they're like afraid that like you won't wake up, which is kind of scary, but. And the whole time you just, you just sitting there in days just looking around like, dang, like what happened? Concussions come in different ways, whether they are minor or severe. When an athlete is diagnosed for the first time, another occurrence is more likely. But even with a potential career-ending and life-threatening injury, concussions often do not scare away athletes despite the symptoms and after effects. Sometimes, though, enough is enough. Mark Brandenstein, a former linebacker at Cardinal Mooney and Youngstown State, had to put his life over football, a decision he still ponders. I was in Pittsburgh, and um, he's the same guy who looked at me, works with the Steelers guys for concussions, and um, he, he told me that I'm slowly getting slower in, in an everyday life. So that kind of hit me a little hard and made me realize, you know, maybe there is more to life than just the sport. For somebody to look at him and tell him not to play anymore, that's, that's real. And, and that, that tells you how um, influential these injuries really are on, on your body and, and who you are and your brain. And um, you really, when, when somebody tells you you can't play anymore, it's, it's you know it's life threatening. I just noticed uh, a difference in some of his day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activities and, and reactions and things like that that I was like you know Mark uh, when you're 40 I'm not going to be the one to be, to be to blame that uh, you're still out here playing and uh, run the risk of injury. You know, there's times, a lot of times, where you, when especially game days and things like that, you sit back and you're like, "Gosh, I, could I have stand and you know one more? Could I have done this one more time? Should I not have said anything the last time? Because you just miss it. You know, it, it boils in you." Um, but I, overall, I'd have to say it was a smarter decision on my part, and um, I'm happy where everything's going, and just I have to live with it. 
Football is the hottest topic regarding sports-related concussions. According to the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System from 1997 to 2012, football ranks second with 476,483 diagnosed concussions, ranking behind bicycling. Rounding out the top five are basketball, soccer, and baseball in that order. Severe, not severe, not only football, but baseball or basketball or some of the worst cases of concussion I've had have been in sports that didn't involve collision or weren't supposed to involve collision. So. Maybe shocking to some, hockey only ranks 12th with an average of 5,695 per year. Possibly more shocking is that boxing is not on the list. Um, it happened more in professional boxing because we don't have on head gears. We have smarter gloves and, um, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, less protection. In the professional level, um, I've probably seen them every card. And what I mean by that is, like, every time somebody puts on a show, I would probably be willing to bet if there's six, seven fights, that means there's, you know, 12 to 14 guys fighting that night, and, 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 and I could probably guarantee you one or two of them has a concussion. There's more of the pros, but you get them good fighters who can hit hard enough that can punch through that head gear, that hit hard enough to knock you out with the head gear. Boxers love what they do. Like, it's just not like something that you just go into. Like, you gotta love what you do to get punched every day. With awareness at a premium, prevention comes in effect. One man attempting a safer environment is Steven Novicki, inventor of Shockstrip. According to its website, Shockstrip was created to protect young patients by giving the outside of helmets added layers of protection to reduce forces associated with helmet-to-helmet -helmet impacts. I actually started researching probably about close to 20 years ago when I started to notice uh, some of my younger patients coming in during football season and they were showing signs of what we now know are concussion-like symptoms. Basically said, hey, I got this device, I'm willing to buy your kids helmets, you know, we're going to be doing some testing, and I said, you know what, what can it hurt? I expected them to be a softer material as opposed to how hard and rigid they were, but, uh, you know, I, I think that they, uh, you know, if we keep hearing about concussions, they, it could get your legs. There's been over 500 kids have worn it. It's been in over 5,000 games, and we have no reported injuries from kids being removed from games uh, for direct purpose of a concussion. So we've had really great response with it. Although he has good research that tells why it lessens the impact, helmet manufacturers are hesitant to put anything on the outside of the helmet and still maintain their helmet warranty. I'm sure it's valuable, I just don't know where it's going and we're not in the position where we're able to experiment with those things. I didn't hear that loud crack and I never had a kid, you know, who wore that helmet had an issue with uh, having a concussion. The material has been around for 43 years and its primary function is to absorb and uh, deflect impacts and it's done that very well in the last four years. No matter how much protection or awareness exists in sports, concussions will still occur for now. Hopefully, numbers will begin to decrease each year, creating an environment where nobody has to wonder and question if an athlete is possibly concussed. Now it's called mild traumatic brain injury or traumatic brain injury. Before it was just a bell ringer or a head bump or you just blacked out for a while and then you were fine, then you resumed activity. I'm sure guys had undiagnosed concussions for, for years and years, I just think, you know, technology is advanced and medicine's advanced to where it's easier to diagnose what's happening with, you know, brain injuries and things like that. I really kind of wanted to get to understand it's not something that you can just be like, give it rest and it will repair itself because a lot of those cells in your brain, once they're gone, they're gone. Especially playing for Youngstown, I grew up here, so you want to be that person, um, you know, that could be the face of what you love. And I think that just kept pushing me and just the love of the game, the drive. Everything today is more modernized, more protected for the, for the athlete, uh, and especially in this sport, because our job is to teach this guy to hit this guy in the head and knock him out. And it's terrible to say it like that, but it is. And your brain is one of the most important organs, obviously, because it's what makes you who you are. And when you damage that, you change who you are.